Good morning, preschoolers. Are you ready for another day of preschool? Do you notice that I'm standing outside today? I thought we would come outside and do our weather. If you look up at the sky, you will notice that today is a very cloudy day. Even over here, I see some dark blue in the clouds, and that might mean that it, would, it might rain later on today. But today, we're definitely gonna have a cloudy day. So when we go inside, we'll put up that cloudy tab. But the real reason that I'm outside this morning is because I wanted to show you something very special. You see, we have had a mother bird build a nest right by our preschool's front door in a pot of flowers. And yesterday, her baby birds, the eggs that she had laid, began to hatch. And we got to watch those little tiny birds crack out of their eggs. And I'm hoping to show them to you today. Now, this is something that we need to be very careful about because the mother bird can be very protective of her babies, just like your mom is protective of you. The mother bird is actually up in this tree and she's watching us, making sure that we don't hurt her babies. So I'm going to talk a little bit more quietly. I'm not gonna make any sudden movements and I'm definitely not going to touch the baby birds. That's kind of a big no-no. We should never touch the baby animals. But I did want to show you and see that these little tiny birds in the nest don't even look like birds at all. In fact, you might see them and you might say, what, that's a bird? But the tiny, tiny baby birds will grow feathers and they will grow up into a bird that can fly. But once they hatch out of the egg, that is not how they look at all. So we're gonna be kind of quiet. This is the flower pot over here. And I'm going to come up and I'm just going to pull back some of the flowers. a little higher. Do you see those little tiny fuzzies in there? Those are the baby birds and they are all together. They're trying to stay warm and the mother bird has been flying back and forth to feed them and take care of them. Yesterday we saw one open its beak and the beak was so cute and tiny. Well, as long as we're here, let's go into preschool today through our door. Welcome. And before I forget, let's put up that cloudy tab for our weather today. You notice that I'm wearing my sweater today. Not only is it cloudy, but it's just a little cool out today. I feel like I need a sweatshirt on. Today, we are going to study more about the weather, not just about clouds, but other things too. And we are going to make our very own weather chart that you can have at home so that every day you can say, oh, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? And that'll be a really fun project. But before we do that, let's talk about our number of the day. Our number of the day is the number eight. And eights are kind of fun because they're super, super curvy to make. I start by making the letter S. And if you haven't learned how to make an S yet, that's okay too. But if I would stop right here, we would say, oh, that is the letter S. But to make a number eight, we can't just make an S. We have to make an S and then we have to close the gate kind of come up like that. So we have a very, very curvy number. Make an S and close the gate. Make an S and close the gate. Make an S and close the gate to make the number eight. You see that? And we're going to practice that today. Eights are hard to get perfect right away because there are so many curvy lines. It's not like the number one or even the number seven where we just have nice straight lines. The eight has lots of curves to it, but if we keep practicing it, it will get easier and easier. 
So we're going to do some work with the number eight today. How many is the number eight? If you hold up your five fingers on one hand and not two, like seven days of the week, we need one more. We need three on this hand and five on this hand. That will give us the number eight. Let's practice counting the number eight over on our number eight sheet. If you have this at home, you can get it out right now. Do you see the big number eight up here in the left corner? It says trace it. So I'm going to start right here. And first I'm going to make my letter S. Here's my S, I'm coming down. And if I stopped there, I would just have an S but I need to close the gate. So I gotta keep coming around and up to make the number eight, okay? Fun. Over in this box, it says place eight stickers here. And I was looking through my sticker drawer and I thought, oh man, these bees look so cute. I'm going to pick out eight bees. Maybe you can count with me at home. There's one, two, buzz, 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 three, four, five, Seven, and that means we just need one more eight. Bees are very important. I know some people don't like bees because they can, they can sting, but they are very, very important to getting our fruits and vegetables to grow. They're big, big helpers. So we put our eight stickers up there. Now let's find our eights. If you have a marker at home, you can go ahead and circle all the eights. You could use a do a dot. Um, today I'm going to cover them up. It says dot or cover the eights. So I'm gonna get out these little covers right here and I'm going to find my eights. Let's see what looks really curvy. Here's one. My cover-ups actually make the number eight look bigger, don't they? Where's another number eight? Ooh, here's one right over here. Where's another one? Eight. Here's another eight. Did we miss any? Oh, I think we missed one in the middle row. I'm gonna get one more cover up. There we go. I covered up all of my eights. I hope you did that at home too, that would be great. Down here, it says use counters to show eight. Now again, right here we have 10 boxes and 10 is more than eight. So we are not gonna fill up all of the boxes, just eight of them. To do that, I thought I would get out my big tub of buttons. Buttons are so fun. You get a big collection of buttons. It's fun to just look through them. Buttons can come in all different kinds of colors and shapes and sizes. Ooh, look at this one right here. That's a really fancy button with beads and jewels on it. So I'm going to pick out eight buttons today. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, I should dig around a little bit, six, seven, and eight. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that means two of these boxes are going to be left blank. And then our last project on our eight sheet is to color or paint eight cats. If you've got watercolors or something fun at home, go ahead and get those out. I'm going to use my marker and I won't color them very all the way just for the sake of time, but let's color in eight of these guys. Here's one, here's two, here's three. How many do I need? I need eight. One, two, three, four. Oh, I better keep going. Five. Six. Seven. Oh, I'm getting so close. Here's eight. And at eight, I'm going to stop because it says eight. I need to color or paint eight cats. So on your sheet, it should look like two rows of cats getting colored in. I hope that this sheet helps you learn about the number eight and helps you count to it. We're gonna go back over and talk some more about weather. Do you remember how I said we're gonna talk more about weather today? If you remember our Bible lesson from last time, we talked about Jesus going up, up, up into heaven. And as he was starting to go up, 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 do you remember what covered him? It was a cloud, wasn't it? We're gonna talk a little bit more about clouds today. Maybe you remember this project from last time that we did together. I'm gonna review. We had Jesus his disciples, and then we had a cloud that slid over. Oh, my sheet is getting stuck there. A cloud that slid over and covered him up. Clouds don't always look like that, do they, though? I have some pictures of other clouds. I'm going to take down my, make an S and close the gate. I'm going to take down my number eight and erase my numbers. I'm going to put my magnets back up here. And I'm going to show you some different pictures of clouds. Now these are definitely clouds in the sky, but they do not look fluffy. They look a little bit more wispy. But that doesn't mean they aren't clouds. It just means that they look different. These are, these kind of look like some of the clouds we have up here. They're dark. They kind of look like they're in layers. And down here, it looks like rain might be coming. These are clouds too, but they are very, very thin and wispy. It's almost like somebody took a paintbrush and just kind of came across the blue sky like that. And these are the kind of clouds that maybe we think about when we think about a cloud hiding Jesus, a big fluffy cloud that looks like you want to squeeze it or jump inside because it's so soft and fluffy. And clouds can even look kind of crazy like this. Wow, just little bits, you know, kind of rigid, but they cover the whole sky. And I could even fill up the whole board with other pictures of clouds. Um, but clouds help tell us about the weather that's coming. And lots of times we like to know what the weather is like outside because we know, oh, if, am I going to need a sweater? like I do today? Would I rather have short sleeves on? Should I plan for rain? And sometimes we even have severe weather that we want to know about if we're making plans. In Kansas, we have sun a lot of the time in spring and summer, and that's really wonderful too. It's another gift um, to help all of our plants grow. Um, if you have this book at home, or I'll link it in the email. This is a very, very fun book. It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. May, I think they even made this one into a, a movie. Maybe you've seen it before, but I definitely recommend reading the book. The book is the original and it's very fun. And it's about what, ha what would happen if weather was a little bit more unusual. So it does talk about clouds, but it talks about other things. So I 
definitely recommend that you read this book at home, okay? Let's go make our own weather chart so that every day you guys can, just like we put the tab up, like today's cloudy, every day you guys can decide at home what your weather is like. Now I went ahead and I started our weather chart for today. This is what it's going to look like when we're all done. We have rain, rainy, we have cloudy, we have windy, and we have sunny. And then we have this nice arrow in the middle, and what we can do is we can move the arrow. Is it rainy today? Then it's going to paint, uh, point to the umbrella with the raindrops. Is it sunny today? Then we move our arrow to the nice bright sun. Down here, this happens in Kansas a lot too, it gets very windy. And then down here in the corner is actually where I'm gonna leave it because today is cloudy. And that's what this says, the weather today is cloudy. To make this project at home though, I would get out this sheet and this is what it looks like to begin with. And when we're done with it, it's going to look like this. But uh, what you're going to want to do is maybe color your rainy, sunny, cloudy, windy. Um, you see that I um, used gray. Actually, my son put this together for me. Gray for the clouds. Or maybe you want to use blue. You could use other colors too. Um, maybe for the sun. You want to get out a yellow crayon or you want to get out an orange crayon because when that sun shines down, oh man, is it bright and yellow and, and sunny. So the first thing I want you to do is get your crayons or your markers, whatever you'd like, and color these pictures, okay? Um, you'll also notice that we colored the arrow and that's just so it sticks out a little bit more, like the color, it pops out. You don't have to, but I would definitely recommend getting some sort of bright color and coloring that arrow just so you can tell where you are pointing for that day, where the weather is pointing. Okay. I won't take the time to color all of it. Okay. When you are done coloring all of your pictures, what you're going to do is you're going to cut them out. And all you're going to need to do is cut them out into squares, little squares. You'll kind of notice that up here, I cut them into squares and you know, it even kind of overlaps on the edge and that's fine. I think you're gonna have a hard time if you try to cut out um, the little tiny pictures and all the little raindrops. So maybe just leave it at a square. The one thing that you are going to want to cut out exactly is your arrow. Do you see how I cut out my arrow exactly right there? Yeah. The one thing you're going to want to cut out just in the shape of an arrow is that. The other supplies you're going to need for today are a paper plate, okay, that's what we used for the background. It's a little bit sturdier than paper. And I used black strips of paper to divide my paper plate into four parts. I made kind of like that cross in the middle. One, two, three, four. Four different parts where I will put each one of my different uh, weather uh, weather pictures. If you don't have black paper at home, I would definitely go ahead and just take a black marker and you could draw black lines to cut your paper into four pieces. That would be pretty easy to do. I'm going to put my paper back up here though, just to show you. After you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and take your colored pictures and you're going to glue them. And you're gonna kinda of have to glue them right down there in the middle, okay? And the only, the only bummer is that when we use glue, sometimes we have to wait for it to dry, don't we? 
So you might have to wait for this to dry a little bit. So you would go ahead and cut out your sunny, your windy, your cloudy, and put it here. Then if you have brass fasteners at home, not everybody does. Teachers keep them on hand. This is called a brass fastener. And as you see in my example, what I did is I poked the brass fastener right through the middle of my arrow, through the middle of my plate, and it actually comes out the back, if you can see how that works. And that allows me to spin my arrow like that. Today's weather is. But if you don't have brass fasteners at home, that is A-OK. -okay. Another common thing that you might have at home is a clothespin or any kind of a clip. Maybe you have like a kitchen clip um, to close bags of chips or other things like that. The other thing you can do is you can take your arrow. I'll show you with this one quickly. You can take your arrow after you've cut it out and you'll need the drippy glue, not a glue stick. You'll need the white bottle of glue for this. Or maybe mom and dad has uh, that Gorilla Glue or hot glue or something like that. You'll probably need their help for that one. But after that, I want you to take your arrow that you've cut out or that an adult has helped you cut out and you're actually going to glue the arrow onto the paper clip like that. And then what you can do is you open the paper clip. Sorry, I'm moving all over the place here. And instead of spinning it, you would clip it right onto your paper plate like that. The weather today is sunny. The weather today is windy. So your arrow, instead of being in the middle, your arrow would be on the outside. And that will definitely work too. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. And if you don't have um, a clothespin or a clip or brass fasteners, if you don't have any of that, you can still make the weather wheel. You can hold, uh, put it up in your bedroom or on the refrigerator. And every day it will remind you to check the weather. And you could even do it along with a video. What, to, what is today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy, windy, rainy, etc.? So that is just kind of a fun weather project. Well, we really have not done much singing today, have we? We skipped our days of the week song because we started outside. Should we close with um, one of our Jesus songs? I think that would be a nice way to close for today. Do you remember Jesus loves the little children? Let's do that one to close. Jesus loves and then Jesus died for and then Jesus rose, okay? Hope you can sing along with me at home. Ready? Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every child in every land, Jesus holds them in his hand. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus died for all the children, all the children of the world. Every child in every land, Jesus holds them in his hand. Jesus died for all the children of the world. Jesus rose for all the children, all the children of the world. Every child in every land, Jesus holds them in his hand. Jesus rose for all the children of the world. And I hope that's what you remember today, just how much Jesus loves you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, your weekend, we're going into the weekend, and we'll see you next week for one more video. We're getting to the end of our school year. It's kind of sad to think about. Um, I'll miss seeing all of you, but I've really had a great time doing this. So we will see you next week. Bye.